<laughs> I almost bust my ass. What's up, y'all? Buddy, first question will come from Sean Cunningham over here. Bet. What's up, man? You okay? Great. Yeah. Um, we didn't get a lot, like, we were kind of talking amongst people in here. It's like we didn't really get a chance to talk to you a whole lot last year. Did, was was last year difficult for you at all? And how has things kind of changed to where you are today? I mean, that, that's it was different in a lot of ways, but you know, you just gotta learn how to adjust in life. You know, just get, you get to learn how to adjust in life and move forward. And uh, no matter what situation you're in, you just gotta learn how to adjust and figure things out. So it's a professional sport, man. You, you know, no complainants. Yeah. We asked the same question to Mark, well, he started in a few minutes ago, but um, you know, you can't help what's in the in the press and, and seeing your name attached to every trade rumor out there. And then here you are in Sacramento today. Is there any part of you that's a little surprised to be sitting here today? Yeah, they love me inside. That's why I'm still here. <laughs> but uh, you know, man, it's, it's business. It's the business we live in. Uh, each and every day, you get a company that compete, and uh, guys can move, guys can get move. Uh, yeah, I saw it, but I can't control none of that, you know. And uh, like I said, this is the business we live in. You know, uh, my job is coming in and work my butt off every day and produce and try to uh, produce wins, and uh, can't get mad at that. And uh, you know, I get paid lots, lots, and lots of money to do this. So uh, I'm blessed in each every day to come out here and compete. And uh, I love being around my guys. Uh, you know, I love the team camaraderie share and all that. You know, the coaching staff has been great. You know, it's been fun. You know, so I mean, I love it. You know, when, whatever happens, happens. I can't control that. But uh, my job is to go out there and play basketball. And uh, I love it to a, at a high level. Next, we'll go to Matt George. Hey, buddy, you've started for this team. You've come off the bench uh, for this organization before. Does that matter to you uh, really at all? And do we overblow the optics of that sometimes starting versus coming off the bench? I mean, it's the way, it's the way you see it. You know, everybody sees it differently. Uh, man, my job is to come to play basketball. And uh, whatever I'm called to do, I got to be ready to do it regardless, if I like it or not. Uh, and that's just the sport of being a professional. Just go out there and compete, and uh, you know things happen, things changes. But uh, my goal is to be a starter every time I come on the court, regardless. Of it, uh whatever the team needs me to do, or whatever team situation I'm in, I gotta be prepared for that. So it's fun, and you know, uh, to get on adjust, like I said earlier, to Sean, just adjusting to whatever you gotta do. What's up, buddy? Sarah Hodges. Um, how do you think this roster has improved from last season, and what are you most excited about? I mean. You know, we're just excited. I'm, I'm excited us to like see where everybody's at mentally, you know, where everybody's goal is, you know, uh, coming in training camp. You know, we all say they want to win, but we just got to go out there and just really show it, you know, and want it and uh, just put down all the personal reasons behind us and then just come together as a team and just figure it out. And uh, that's our biggest goal, just figuring it out. And uh, when we got the pieces, and we, you know, we have, we have scoring, we have shooting, you know, we just got to put it together and pay attention to the little details. So just got to figure it out. And that's been the fr frustrating part about this group because we, we got guys that capable of doing it, but just got to figure it out. From what you guys, the work that you guys have put in so far, which I know is little, do you see that improving? Do you see the chemistry building? I mean, it's off season. So you got you to build it during training camp. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys ain't working out together, but sometimes different lineups. So you just got to figure it out and, you know, and just you know, do what's best for the team, not as best for myself or, Everybody else, um, or just thinking like, oh, this game, I got to do this. No, just what's best for the team. So just trying to figure it out. G-Man. Hey, buddy, in terms of your individual growth as you go through the years in the NBA, what do you specifically work on leading into this season to try to be better? What category? And are you a goal setter as, a, as an individual? Yes, for sure. Uh, last year, like, you know, my, my, my goals didn't, I set a lot of goals last year. I didn't really get to my goals, but uh, this summer I work hard on my body and keep it in shape, you know, uh, just being more fit and uh, staying locked in on the certain details of my body. And just, I say, coming in between the camp more shape and being ready to perform at a high level. And uh, yeah, of course I set goals to myself and I keep them to myself, but uh, you know, just the thing this year is like a motivating year for me to uh, take, I take a big set. For me, like, Took a big step drop, like few percentage down, like three point percentage down. So, take a big drop in that. So, I'm just it's more motivated this year. That, uh, like I say, always have something to prove. You know, the league, there's something to prove. There's always young guys coming, so there's always new talent that that's very appealing to the league. But uh, 
as an older player, you got to go there and show them why you still belong in the league and you got to play at a high level because if you don't do that, they try to mark you and uh, you don't need markers, a certain type of guy. So it's, a, it's always more, that's the beauty of the game. You got to motivate each other and you see the like, older guys are like CP of the world and like just, you know, he's 37, 36, but he's playing at a high level in the finals and uh, he's contributing big. So, so just watching those guys and seeing those guys doing that, at that level and me being 28, I say, yo, it's still a lot left in the tank and uh, just trying to, try to prove myself each and every day as I go on the court. And that's obviously every, every player in the league that's trying to prove themselves. Thank you. James Ham. Yeah, buddy, we talked to Luke and he said that he's had conversations with you about what's expected, where you're, where you're going to play, you know, the type of role that you might have. Just you can see how many guards this team has. Did you concentrate sort of on maybe getting bigger and stronger to play a little bit more wing this year? Um, or just was it your standard offseason? No, just whatever they call me to do, I just got to do. And it's, you just gotta be, and if I'm if I'm playing a bigger wing world, I just get like I say, adjust and toughen up and uh do what they tell me that I need to do. And I, I know like the topic of this of discussion around the league today is vaccinations, not vaccinations. I know you're a guy who I think you've missed three games total in your career. Just how much does that play in your mind when it comes to whether you're vaccinated or not and, and you know how you think of that process and especially if you go to Golden State, you couldn't play in a game. At this point, I, I thought I thought that the players and Golden State couldn't play in the game. I didn't thought that play, players who were the players who are in market couldn't play games. That's what I thought. No, like a, oh, a visiting team, you're right. You might not be not have to miss. So. Yeah, it's just, I think that that's Golden State rule. I think that's a visit team rule. Same thing as New York. Yeah. I just help you out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I think every player should have the right to do whatever is best for them. And uh, whatever they believe in, that's their rights. You know, uh, yeah, Cobra came around, but you know, if you, if you feel better not being unvaccinated, then you should be back to unvaccinated and then you should just go to the protocol the leagues want you to do to team playing. And I think that's, like I said, adjusting to something new and uh, the league got to respect the players. And uh, I think there's a lot of like high level players that don't really, Want to get vaccinated so you know league has to respect that because you know when we signed these contracts and stuff they didn't say they had to be vaccinated to play basketball so i think they, the league should respect those players for the um situations where they or what they believe in and uh we, we as players just got to follow the protocol to do that to play tony harvey hey buddy um just wanted to ask you you've been here for what Almost four seasons, three and a half seasons, four seasons, and, and five, you know, five, five and a half. Okay, I, I should know better. Thank you for the correction. No, you uh, That's why I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> uh, just you know, it, and each year, you know, uh, the Kings uh, come up short on the playoffs. Uh, just want to know, you know, does that? I'm pretty sure it does. You know, where the motivation level is, you know, to try to break that curse to push this organization over that hump? And, and how do you approach that? Is that, you know, some of your some of your thoughts that, you know, uh, that's been lingering around in your mind, you know, going into this season as too? There's something that you really want to do since, you, since you've been here. What's your approach on that? Yeah, my approach is, as, as it always been, I just try to get the Sacramento Kings to playoffs, you know, uh, where the fans might not see it or not, you know, that's been our approach, you know, and uh, we show signs, but we figure it out and then we, Yes. Show signs where we don't figure it out. You know, we drop way back off. We win seven row and lose seven row. So I think it's the biggest this team is just focus on the little details and then just locking in. Yeah, you drop two. No matter if it's Golden State, Brooklyn, figure out to win that third one. You know, just getting back on track and don't get distracted to who's playing or who's next and uh, on the roster and just lock in and uh, figure it out. Whatever you got to do, just win, game, win the game. And uh, and that's big, you know, especially doing a young group that like somebody. And uh, we don't have that much bad. Just keep us like putting on our backs, so, like yo, that's how you win. But just getting how to figure it out, and uh, just pay attention to little details that can help us win and close those games. You know, because we all make mistakes and we're not perfect. You know, and uh, I don't think it's a lot of pressure. We just got to figure as a group and come collectively as one, and I uh, figure out how to win games. And uh, when it's going bad, figure out how to turn it to good. Okay. And my last question, and real quick, because I've heard this uh, response. The same response from like Harrison and, and De'Aaron. Did you guys, you know, talk about trying to break that, you know, break through that um, 
through that curse to, you know, get in the postseason play as a team? I mean, that's everybody's just go. I if you if you're not you don't want to play in the postseason, I don't know why you're playing. Uh nobody wants to be in this play regular season basketball. Basketball. I don't want to play regular season basketball the rest of my life in the NBA. So we've been motivated each and every day. So myself alone trying to get the postseason. It sucks watching other teams in the postseason. Take a couple more for Buddy. Mark Dembski. Hey buddy, how you doing, man? What's up, man? You talk a lot about figuring it out that players, you know, yeah. that's what your job is to do. What's different than with this group? And I know you're just getting started with, with some of these guys, but as you look at this group, what, what's different and, and what will make the difference, do you think, with this group? I mean, we got a lot of new play, play, places. You know, we got faces that have been with us before. We got Alex just before. And, uh, you know, we got really a league guard we just drafted, you know, so... When I say figure it out, just figure out how we all can play at a high level together. And when us coming together, and Tristan, he's been on championship teams before and he's been a lot of experience. So just them using the experience and uh, and putting it together and just figuring out how we can be a playoff team, whereas a six, seven, eight seed team, or try to get to the play on the playing game, whatever this team is at. So we just gotta come together and uh, play for each other. And that's what I'm gonna figure it out. Just, to get to that point where we, where we haven't been as yet. Do you see those pieces here that uh, is different than, than in years past for you? I mean, we have a league guard, he's a rookie, so he has adjusted the league and everything, but he's really good. And you have guys like Tristan and uh, Alex that have played at a high level for a long time. Tristan being in multiple finals, Alex has been in multiple playoffs before. So we have the guys, but we just gotta put it together. And uh, you know, we have Harrison who's in the league wing. so. Just gotta figure it out. Nice last, th last three guys. Jason Anderson. Buddy, love. Good to see you, man. And why are you not here? You're not vaccinated. I guess not. <laughs> I am because vaccinated. Because they, they keep asking a vaccination question. Like you're not vaccinated because you're not inside the building. Are you yeah, vaccinated? No. I, I am vaccinated. I'll be in the building tomorrow. Just couldn't. Yeah, wait. You, you got to be vaccinated because why you? I see you. You report everything. First, yeah, man. First hand. They told me I couldn't come see you in person unless I got back. Wow, and you still with oh. the black screen, right? What happened? Man, I'm, I'm good. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Hey, uh, you know, uh, following up on a couple of these other questions, you there was one day in particular you were very... We have social distancing. Buddy, you, you were real close to, to becoming a Laker, man, that one day. What what was that day like for you? And then just, you know, all this other – You have a Tristan say what kind of question is that? <laughs> well, I you were real close to being day, – Day one of training camp, Buddy Heald is wearing a Sacramento Kings jersey. Um, that's where his mind and focus is at. He's going to have a stellar year. I'm going to set him some great wide pin downs to get him open. Facts. So, you know, that's his mindset right now. What's in the past, in the past, you cannot control that. When you look in the rear view, that's when you crash. We look forward and ahead. Thank you. What he said, bro. All right. That was a good answer, buddy. Uh, moving <laughs> on. Um, Luke did say he's had some really good conversations with you about what he wants, what he needs. Uh, what were those conversations like from your view? And then uh, to follow up on, on James's question earlier, do you, do you expect to play a little bit more three this year? I mean, well, uh, me and Luke, well, me and Luke, had we keep that in the house, but, uh, you know, we, we had a good conversation. But, yeah, if I haven't played three, I would play three. That's how I say, just adjusting to my role and whatever the team needs me to do and just figuring it out and uh, uh, being the player I need me to be. All right, buddy. Thanks, man. All right, guys. Mm -hmm. Go to Matt George. He's last not two. Huh? He's lying. <laughs> well, buddy, I can kind of tell this based off of what just happened with Tristan, but um, uh, Tyrese Halliburton and De'Aaron Fox both shared that building relationships has been a focus of theirs this offseason. Has that been a focus of yours as well? And, and how have those relationships formed with these uh, new guys here in Sacramento? My name is Buddy. It's not hard to make a friend around here. So <laughs> I'm everybody's friend. You good? Uh, Jim Conlon. Hi, buddy. Uh, just one quick one for me to you. Uh, I spoke to Luke Walton last year, and he came up with a famous quote uh, and answer he gave me. He said, if I'm going to the roulette table and the game's on the line and I've got my last chips, I want the dice in buddy's hands. 
how confidence does that give you as a player when your coach has that belief in you that when everything's on the line, he wants the ball in your hands to take that shot? I'm a good shooter. I don't miss. Nah, we just we're messing with you. But uh, no, it's Luke. Uh, I mean, I mean, Luke have good talks, and uh, like Luke knows my mindset is that, and I work hard, and uh, he trusts me a lot to make a lot of shots, and uh, even shots where I think is impossible to make, he gives me the confidence to do that. And uh, as a coach, you want to have a guy like that that's riding your back, and I was always on you. So, you know, I respect the respect level is there. So, uh, like I say, you have a lot of confidence in me. So, uh, as a player, you know, uh, I have the confidence to take the shot wherever he draws up. I'm ready to do. And finally, uh, buddy, uh, just one thing. I suppose you're repping for the people of the Barbados, Bahamas, Bahamas, all that Bahamas, stuff. Bahamas, Bahamas, Bahamas. Come on, man. Bahamas. Bahamas. How important is that that you're like a cult figure for your home sort of country and did you inspire a next generation of players to appear in the NBA? Uh, you know, uh, it's really good. Uh, Normally, I came from the Bahamas and just being – in the NBA and uh, just seeing the uh, guys like DeAndre Ayton coming up and now uh, your Kai Jones who just get drafted from uh, Charlotte Hornets, you know, it was really inspirational. And, like, yeah, I look like a big bro to them, but, uh, but uh, it's just motivating the, the, the other little kids like to keep on pushing, you know, it's hard, you know, like, you know, guy like Tristan from Canada, there was a lot of, not a lot of Canadians in the league, you know, you got a, about 20 Canadians in the league now and they're playing at a high level. So our job is, me, DeAndre Aiden, and uh, Kyrie Jones to keep on inspiring the young kids to keep on believing that they can play in the league and one day they can be like us and uh, be able to help other people and inspire the youth coming up for sure. Thank you, buddy. Yes, sir.